Yes, people, that's right. Welcome back to another episode of Bad Dating Chronicles, to where we talk about, you know, bad dates, bad hookups, bad miscommunications, or whatever it might be in the series of this hectic, hectic world we love to call dating. So I would love to welcome my next guest, Allie. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much for coming on and wanting to share your story. Sure. So this happened about shortly before COVID. It was 2019. I was at Port in Maryland uh, paying a traffic ticket. And there was a very mm-hmm. attractive state trooper in the courtroom. So, you know, we made a little eye contact. Nothing, you know, nothing special or whatever. So I went downstairs uh, to pay the fine. It was for a speeding ticket. So he was there waiting for uh, to escort a prisoner back to the jail. He had appeared in court. We were waiting to escort mm-hmm. him back. So he's like, oh, you're still here? And I'm like, yeah, I got to pay this fine. He was like, how much? I told him it was a couple hundred dollars. He was like, damn, that's crazy. I said, yeah, it's a you know, mess. So <laughs> small talk, small talk, whatever. Uh, I was walking to my car. I walked past his car. And he said, excuse me, miss. I said, yes. Um, take my number. I'm like, okay, it's kind of kind of forward, you know, but whatever. He was in a hurry trying to get out of there with the prisoner. So I took his number. He said, just make sure you text me when you get to your car. I said, sure. So I sent him a text and he was like, it was nice to meet you. You're, you know, you're a nice looking young lady. Can I take you to lunch the next day? I said, you know, sure. Why not? You know, I'm a publicist, so I work from home. So my schedule is flexible. So I could, you know, fit in. It wasn't a big deal. So the next day he sent me a text and uh, he says, meet me at my station in Annapolis, Maryland. I said, okay. So I meet him there. I park my car there and I get into his patrol car. Was it the I'm front like, or the back seat? I was in the front. Okay. <laughs> I was in the front. I was riding shotgun. Okay. Okay. So we get into his patrol car. We go to dine at a, a little Chinese restaurant near his station. Okay, cool. No big deal. Just small talk, cute little date. Nothing uneventful then his radio goes off and i didn't understand the whole cop law enforcement lingo whatever whatever he's like um well and then he he looks at me and he says before i take you back to your car i have to go to route 50 and i said okay what's going on um i have to possibly arrest someone for a dui and i'm like Okay, and he couldn't, he didn't have time because he literally, he was on the job. He was still on the clock, fitting our, our little get together, get to know in uh-huh. his schedule. But he was taking, yeah. still on duty. Uh-huh. So I'm just right. like, okay. So we drive to Route 50, we pull up on this guy who's apparently, you know, incredibly inebriated. He said, just hold tight, I'll be right back. Okay, he gets out. He starts to administer a breathalyzer. Mind you, I'm sitting in his patrol car. He's about to arrest someone for a DUI. We're supposed to be on a date, right? A date. <laughs> so it gets better. So he walks back to the car. He said, look, I can't take you back to your car. I'm going to have one of my colleagues come and get you and take you back to your car. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell him. Now, now, mind you, when we were on our date, I was telling him that I'm a publicist and I get people um, interviews and, and media coverage for their events or for their platforms. He had no idea that before I became a publicist, I was actually a journalist. So this is going to be important later on in the story. Okay. All right. So anyway, he says, um, but here's what I want you to tell my colleague. I want you to tell my colleague that you're doing a story. Because at that point, he had been a state trooper for 25 years. So I want you to tell him that you're doing a story on me. You, you know, you're following me and um, that's why you're here. Now, mind you, I had on a tank top with no bra on. It was the summertime. So what kind of reporting was I doing with no tank top, with a tank top on with no bra on? A study report? <laughs> I mean, I was, I was in the passenger seat, like, this is how cops lie. Yeah. This is how they cut crazy stuff out of their butts. Because I'm looking at him, I'm just like, okay. Now, thank God I had a background in journalism, so I was able to make it make sense and not look too hot. But I but I went from minding my business, paying a, a, a speeding ticket, to I'm in the passenger seat while my date is arresting somebody. 
and I'm it, caught up in all kinds of lies and craziness, right? I was freaking mortified. <laughs> what if that guy had been armed and dangerous? I'm caught in, in crossfire, and I was just trying to get my little date on. Yeah, well, you got more of your little date on. You got a story, so. So the story gets better, right? So, so his colleague comes and I, you know, I have to cross the median over to the other side of, of the highway going in the northbound direction. So I hop out, I get into his colleague's car. So, um, I guess he had told the colleague the lie that, you know, I was a reporter covering him, right? So the colleague starts asking me legit questions about this profile piece I'm doing on this, you know, seasoned officer. And I'm just pulling stuff out of my butt. And I'm just like, how in the hell did I, what, 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 what? this is the twilight zone. Like I didn't ask, I didn't sign up for all this. I was trying to get to know somebody. Next thing you know, I'm lying to an officer. I'm in the passenger seat while he's arresting somebody. Bro, I, I barely even know your last name, right? So, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting, I'm shooting, whatever, I'm shooting, shooting the stuff, just trying to make it sound convincing. He drops me off. I take a deep breath. Um, I send him a text saying, hey, I'm back at my car safely. Um, that was very eventful. And he said, yeah, my, my life is kind of crazy. Glad you're okay. It, 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 I wouldn't say it was a bad date. It was just a very interesting, at times, uncomfortable date that could have gone really wrong. Um, Absolutely. Yes. All jokes yes. aside, I, I, I shouldn't have been in the squad car, right? Um, but I wasn't. Everything turned out okay. But it makes for a good story in hindsight. But while it was happening, I'm texting my girlfriend. I'm like, yo, yo. They're like, girl, what? I said, yo, yes. I'm in this dude's squad car while he's arresting somebody. And I have to lie to his colleague. And I'm just trying to get back home in one piece. That's all I was trying to do. But I do have another story. This happened about eight, seven years ago. So I met this guy on Yahoo Personals. That's how long ago that was, right? And we just were exchanging messages back and forth. We agreed to meet up at a restaurant in DC. Then it was cool, you know, nothing, nothing really, you know, major. It was cool. No, not we didn't have chemistry, but it was cute nevertheless. But here's where things get interesting. So me being a good Samaritan, um, as we were leaving the restaurant, he said he had to walk to the garage to get his car. I said, well, I'll drop you off, you know, because he treated me for, to dinner. The least I can do is drop him off at his car, right? He said, oh, oh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm good. I said, are you sure? He said, all right. I appreciate the offer. We get in my car. We're driving around. He cannot remember where he parked his car. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, let's let's retrace your steps. And, you know, I'm helping him to try and jog his memory as to where he parked his car. We, we drive around for an hour and a half. DC is not that big. It's not that big that you can't remember where you parked your car, okay? So finally, he just says, well, just, just drop me off at this garage and uh, you know, I'll, I'll just figure it out. I said, but are you sure you parked here? So for me, I'm just not understanding why this man had me drive all around and he can't remember where he parked his car. I said, all right, no problem, whatever. At that point, I was I was done, right? So the next day, he sends me a text apologizing to me, telling me that he actually didn't have a car and he was too embarrassed to tell me that. And I said, I wouldn't have cared about you having a car or not. You know what I mean? It's just my thing is that why, why don't you just be honest with me and tell me exactly what was going on and not have me drive all the way around trying to find your car. I just thought that was, I thought that part of it was very inconsiderate. Half, I wasted almost a quarter tank of gas trying to find a car that didn't even exist. Now that was a bad date. There's nothing that could excuse that type of behavior. That was just a bad date. So, okay, so I want to go back to the cop now. Um, okay. So after everything commenced then you text him everything, did you have any further contact with him after that? I, I did, actually. We, we started talking, but it just didn't, why it didn't materialize was because he was still taking family vacations with his ex-wife and his daughter. Now, mind you, his daughter was at that time 12, 13. And I didn't say anything to him about it, but in my mind, I wasn't comfortable with that. I'm like, 
you guys aren't a family. So why are you still taking family vacations? Why are you still mm-hmm. putting the side of a family? So although I didn't feel that it was appropriate for me to discuss that with him, I just distanced myself um, for that reason. But we did, we, we can, I mean, we never went past the talking stage, if that's what you're trying to ask, no. Well, no, it was just, it was just asking you like, because you know how people like say, oh, well, we still talk, we still communicate, you know, we still no, keep no, in touch. No. No. Okay. Actually, it's funny, a year ago, I was invited to a, I think it was a Congressional Black Caucus event and Dougie Fresh was performing in DC uh, at the Marriott Marquise in DC. So he told me while we were talking that he used to um, to, to he used to moonlight at the Marriott um, and provide security services. So hadn't seen him all that since 2019. Walk into this event and he's standing at the door. He was um, the hotel had him in charge of security for Dougie Fresh. So I saw him. I just walked past him. We didn't we didn't speak to each other. So it's whatever. Life goes on. You know how you just stop talking to somebody and you know you just you you don't reach out. He doesn't reach. They, they don't reach out. It's just the communication just fizzles, and that's what happened. So it was awkward for I guess either one of us to say anything. So no one said anything. I understand that, and sometimes people they want to say something, but then it's like, oh well, we had maybe like a bad time, so you might not know if they were still interested or not. So for it me, could have been that time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But for me, I just was like, okay, hey, whatever. I told my girls, I was like, yeah, that's that that cop dude. It was like, oh, I mean, he's cute. He's a very very attractive man. Not nothing at all, you know, nice looking dude. But it just didn't work out. So, given the fact that you had this. I won't say, well, maybe traumatic experience, yes. Um, has it ever stopped you from wanting to date another type of law enforcement? Yeah, it's actually turned me off. It really has. And what turned me off, not only was I, I, I feel that what he did was irresponsible. You know, again, in the moment, it's, it's, it's like, wow, wow, wow. But in hindsight, it was irresponsible. I could have been hurt. So yes. that just didn't. It just didn't sit well with me. And then the lying part, that just made me look at law enforcement like, wow, you're 25 years on the job. You knew I shouldn't have been in your squad car. You had me lie. You had me, you know, in, in, in a sense, compromise my integrity just to cover yourself for having a civilian in your, your car. That wasn't cool. Mm-hmm. So those two things really turned me off um, to ever getting romantically involved with someone in law enforcement. So if he would have said to you, "Hey, Ali, I have I'm still on duty. Can we postpone this?" Would have been would have been something you would have agreed to and then came that back to it later. Fine. That would have been okay. fine. That would have been fine for me. But he was he worked at the time. He was still on the force, and then he worked at night. You know, trying to burn the candles at both ends. Cool, no problem. I understand he's busy and was really trying to get to know me and fit me in. So I wasn't upset about that. I just think he should have made better decisions um yeah he was was very much so and you know 25 years you know on the force you know that says a lot so yeah just a little disappointed in in the behavior yeah because that seems to be most shocking most because you be on for so long you have some type of integrity to yourself just yourself for starters and then you put a civilian in the line to where it could have got worse than it needed to be so that could have been a whole story like okay why was this chick in your car like i mean Mm -hmm. why was this chick in your car like you you know because it would have been found out that i wasn't a reporter that i was there you know on a in a personal personal capacity it's just not cool wow interesting i and you hear stories about police officers and they're being irresponsible, but you never hear something like this to where you had a civilian in your car while still on duty. It's different when you're off duty, but still, yep, taxpayers paying for you to take a chick out on a date. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, like, it's just, it just, it just, it was, it was, it was wild. Wow. This is, this is one that I've, never heard before <laughs> and i'm going to remember <laughs> yeah. i'm really going to remember that it's just wow you you can't believe it and um even so more that it's alarming it's alarming that 
You still have people trying to put other people at risk just for the benefit of themselves. And that's just not fair. Yeah. It's and, really and not. Because here's the thing. The guy he was arresting, he could have been armed. You know, yep. he could have started shooting at the car. I mean, I mean, like, literally, like, there were just so many things that went through my mind. And although, you know, I could have insisted, I just, I think for me in the moment, I was kind of like, there was a sense of excitement. Like, you're going to do what? Like, arrest somebody? Like, it just, it just, and, and I should, and I should have made better decisions, right? I should have, I could have like, you know what? I'll just take an Uber back to my car. I could have done that as well, right? So I don't want to totally blame him for having me there. I could have, I could have said, you know what? Hey, I'm not comfortable with, you know, accompanying you, um, to, to witness your arrest. And now that I'm thinking about it, that could have been a flex for him. Like he, maybe he wanted me to see him in action doing what he does. You know, you know, you know how some, some Mm -hmm. men are. Right. So now that I'm thinking about it, now that we're having this conversation, I am thinking that for him, I mean, I took his word for it. I mean, I, I, I saw him in a professional capacity, so I wasn't doubting, you know, what he did for a living, but I think he wanted to, for me to see, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, I'm out here protecting our roads and protecting our citizens. I, I don't know what the what the rationale was, but I just know it could have been really crazy. So l- let me ask you a question and kind of be funny. So if you said like, yo, hold this just in case, would you would have done it? <laughs> I'm like, like, nothing in there. <laughs> putting that in my purse, in my cleavage, in my pockets, under my wig. No. Nothing gets held. No, I'm not holding anything for anybody. No, sir. Okay. Okay. You can hold it, yourself. it doesn't need to be held. Got it. Okay. All right. I, I understand your your stance. I do. Um, and so it's just like thank you. Really, thank you. Because as I said before, we all hear stories, like yeah. horror stories yeah. of how police become very like they're above the law, they can do anything. But it's one of those things like, well, never uh, in hindsight of somebody else. So, wow. Can't believe that happened. So Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. So, but, you know, again, it makes for, it makes for an interesting story. But if I was ever in the, that position again, uh, I would, number one, protect myself. Absolutely, so, yes. Just make better choices. Now, have you told anyone else this and they like wouldn't believe you? No, I mean, I told my friends and they were like, girl, you know, they were all mad at me. Like, you should have left. Like, they were, they were, they were, they were like, well, you know, that means he doesn't really like you. Because if he really liked you, he wouldn't have put you in danger. And others were like, well, you should have left. So the, the reaction has been mixed. Like, mm-hmm. well, good for to him anyway, because he didn't care about you because he potentially put you in harm's way other people are like you should have left you knew better you had an opportunity to leave and uber yourself back to your car to avoid even having to deal with that so um and other people are just like cops out here ain't ain't ish they're really not they're just they're they're not ish right so it's Mm -hmm. been mixed um but yeah, wild, wild situation. You know, had me lying, lying for him and everything. Well, proves my point. Don't trust nobody. <laughs> Not even a Boy Scout. So. Right. right. I would classify that date as an interesting date. The guy who didn't yeah. have a car and who was roaming, had me roaming around D.C., that was a bad date. You know, and, and ironically, there was valet parking at the restaurant. So when he said he parked in the in a garage, I was like, why would you pay to park at a, in a garage when there was complimentary valet parking at the restaurant? So again, in hindsight, everything just made sense as to there was never a car in the first place. Um, and he apologized the next day. And my thing was, I don't care, you know, you not having a car, you know, they're professional, pe- reputable people who don't have cars. Everyone doesn't drive. That wouldn't have been a turnoff for me. My turnoff is that you lied. Yes. And you had yeah. me drive around for an hour and a half. I'm genuinely concerned and I'm just not hit, like, to, 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 to put two and two together. He doesn't, probably doesn't have a car. You know, I'm not, sometimes it just takes a while for things to kind of process for me, right? Mm-hmm. So when he sent me a text, he didn't have a car. 
then I started to see, remember all the signs, all the signs. So mm -hmm. yeah, people are just, uh, people are funny, special, very special. Well, I'll, I'll say this before I let you go. Um, people don't lie. Don't lie. Just be very honest, open, because you have people who are understanding of things, situations, as she alluded to earlier. And it is okay. It is okay to be like, hey, Ali, I don't have a car. I caught the bus. You mind just dropping me off? And you probably would have said, okay, wait, the bus got there, drop me off. And we probably could have still been talking. But it's all about honesty. And that's the thing about people nowadays. When it comes to dating, dating especially, they're not honest about their intentions or what's going on with them. But let me, all... but I'm, I don't right. mean to interrupt you, but I'm, I'm just remembering the, our interaction. And one thing that he said, because I asked him, I said, well, why did you lie? And he said, because, you know, online, you know, you're this business woman, you got everything together. <laughs> And I just felt like I wouldn't have had a chance with you if I had disclosed to you that I didn't have a car. And so it made me really self-reflect like, okay, what am I putting out there as to where people feel like I'm this, I don't know, I don't, someone who doesn't understand. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I had to really self-evaluate myself because I'm like, yo, am I putting, am I putting out vibes that, I'm not understanding of, of people's situations. I, I guess, I guess no. so. I don't know. It's okay. it's not that. It could just be the inferior of uh, you see a gorgeous, successful woman doing her thing, and then you see you come up, come upon her on a dating site online somewhere, and you be thinking, well, wow, why is she on here when there can be a plethora of men who are successful like her? So it's just more like you know, men, or I can even speak we as men. We might feel inferior at some point to where, okay, do we stack up? Do we have the standards that she's looking for that she wants that's comparable to her? But some men don't see it that way. If you've never, if you've never had success, trying to go get success is harder to get it rather than keep it. So, so I'm not saying that I know it, but me, you know, being in relationships where I've been with women who are way almost above my pay grade that I'm still going to try. It's almost like you can shoot for the moon a million times, but the moment you get there, you want to get there and stay there. So it's almost like getting, getting and being with women who are more than what we thought we could get. Cause it's almost like, yes, we want caviar, but sometimes we got to settle for spam. That's, that's, that's true. And that's really deep. And I thank you for presenting that perspective. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I it just really made me self-reflect and um, just kind of change the way I move so that I don't come off as being um, like, I don't come off as lacking empathy. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Well, we, we all have empathy, but sometimes we choose not to use our, our best, not to be empathetic with people because mm -hmm. we never get the whole story because remember in dating people are so quick to send a representative they never send their real self so right. if i say hey you i want to take you out but i'm saying oh i'm this and i'm that and then i show up on that first date and i give you everything what else do i have to offer after that first date so if I tell you, okay, I'm just your average guy. I have a basic job. It's not as glamorous as yours. Is it still comparable to where you'll see me as a person and not for what I have and what I don't have? So never try to, and I don't even, not even say like, I know you like this, but just never try to, you know, downplay yourself just because one guy did it. It doesn't mean everybody else will. It just happens because people don't like to be honest. They really don't. That's true. This is true too. So, yep. Yeah. It's rough out here in these streets. Yeah, especially for us beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, um, thank you so much for coming on and you know no sharing problem. your story. Your, your oh wow, I won't forget this one. I'm gonna go back and watch it and use it as <laughs> as research. That's what I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes also so if people are interested uh like you say you are a pr rep if i'm not mistaken yeah, I'm a publicist. yes so i've been a publicist yes since 2007 uh before okay. that i was a writer for a general i was a general assignment reporter 
for the Washington Afro in Washington, D.C. Um, and I secured that position after graduating from Howard University in 2005. Mm-hmm. So I've um, been a publicist since 2007. I work with nonprofit entities, for-profit entities, um, people in the medical field, people, authors, attorneys. Uh, I also provide my services to promote um, events within the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. So love what I do. Keeps me busy. Keeps me on my toes and uh, just trying to fit life in between. And my website is www.dynamicpublicrelations.com. I'm available by email, phone, social media, Dynamic Public Relations on Instagram. So I look forward to hearing from everybody. Bye. Well, people, you heard her story. Man, she, a cop tried to hook up with on duty. Wow. Yeah. Especially for people who are trying, especially for shitty ass law enforcement who think they can get over, but then they really can't. No thanks to people like Allie who, you know, like to see the truth for what it is. So this has been another episode of Bad Dating Chronicles here on YouTube. Make sure if you enjoyed this, you like, you comment, and you subscribe right, right down below. So I will talk to y'all soon and y'all take care.